Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer, and this is our second video on Stokes' theorem. In the previous video, we introduced the theorem, and we worked one example where you were asked to calculate the surface integral, which is the outward flux of the curl of a vector field, and you traded it in for the line integral around the boundary. Now we're going to work it in the reverse order. You're asked to calculate a line integral, you're going to trade it in for the surface integral. Um, over uh, any surface that has that as its boundary. We're going to pick a, a nice surface. Okay, so we'll call this example two. We're asked to evaluate this line integral. We have a vector field, and the curve is the triangle that's formed from one on the x and one on the y and two on the z axis. So it looks like that. So that's our curve C, uh, oriented. Um, oriented uh, counterclockwise. If it's not said, you assume that. And so we could actually parameterize each of those three and um, perform three different line integrals. Instead, however, we're going to use the simple surface that has that curve C as its boundary. It's the plane. And so we are going to find the curl of f dot n, where n is the normal vector to that plane, and then we have ds, which is a patch of surface, um, a patch of that surface. We'll see how to calculate it. This is our first time really going through the calculation of a surface integral. Let's do it. So s is our plane. We need to find the equation of that plane. Okay. Uh, there's a long way and there's a short way. Here, here comes the long way. So uh, you get two vectors that are in the plane. You cross them, you get the normal vector to the plane. So what are two vectors that are in this plane? Uh, pick one point as your anchor and then go to the other two points. Okay. And so if I pick one, zero, zero as my anchor, the one on the x-axis, I go to the two on the z-axis, I go to the one on the y-axis, I get my two vectors. Okay. Um, the vector between two points, you take the terminal point minus the initial point. So um, we'll end up with negative 1, 1, 0 for the one vector and negative 1, 0, 2 for the other vector. Cross these two, you end up with 2, and then you end up with the, um, the opposite of a negative 2, and then you'll end up with uh, the opposite of a negative 1. So 2, 2, 1 is your normal vector to the plane. All right, great. Um, to find the equation of any plane, you need a normal vector and a point that's on the plane. Uh, we have three of them, so we're good to go. Um, so, um, for the normal vector, we in the formula, we need it to be a unit. Um, so we will, we will change that to be a unit vector in a second. Um, in general, though, to, to get the uh, ds, okay, we have to have an equation for our surface S, okay? Um, when you have the normal vector, you have the co coefficients on A, B, and C, the coefficients on X, Y, and Z, I call them A, B, and C, in the equation of a plane. Uh, AX plus BY plus CZ equals D is what we're gonna use. Um, so 2X plus 2Y plus 2Z equals D, and we can figure out what D is by plugging in any of the three points. Here I've plugged in the one on the X axis, giving me the fact that D must be two. So I have in hand the equation of the surface, which is a plane. Now, when we're doing um, any surface integral, what we need is uh, to, to know how the function is coming at us. There's three different types. The function could be explicitly defined. Z is a function of X and Y. The function could be implicitly defined, where the X, Y's, and Z's are so tangled up that you can't solve for Z as a function of X and Y. And the third type, is when the function is de described parametrically. Uh, what we're gonna do is see that this one we have here is just explicitly defined. We'll solve for z. So move the 2x and the 2y over. z is equal to 2 minus 2x minus 2y. This is our surface. In doing a surface integral, you have to come up with the equation of the surface, or maybe it's given to you. We had to come up with it. We had to work it. But we have it. And then we have to go calculate ds. We have to calculate the normal vector, make it a unit, dot it with a curl. And then we end up with a double integral. Um, the actual execution of this flux integral ends up as a double integral over the shadow region in the xy plane. And that looks like a triangle there. 
So we'll get there. Let's uh, let's first talk about ds. Um, in general, um, the, the normal vector n is definitely two two one, but we need to make a unit. Uh, what's nice about that vector is that um, it has a integer value for its magnitude. Uh, two squared plus two squared plus one squared happens to be exactly nine. So when you take the square root of that, you get three. So we can find a unit version of this normal vector right away. In general, I want to show you though, if somebody throws a surface at you who is explicitly defined, I want to show you the process of finding its normal vector, unit normal vector. You take the um, function set equal to zero, and then you take the gradient of that vector uh, that, that scalar function. So for us, it's, it's just 2, 2, 1. The magnitude of that is 3. So we take the 2, 2, 1 and we dot, divide by 3. I like to put the 1 third on the outside instead of bringing in the fractions everywhere, propagating it throughout the problem. I have the 1 third hanging on the outside. That's my normal vector. I didn't have to go through this using of g. I knew what my normal vector was. I could have made it easily unit, but I just want you to see in general how you do it for a standard surface that's given explicitly. You define the surface, you take the gradient, you divide by the magnitude of the gradient. That gives you your normal vector, and it will be unit. All right, great. Next up, we need ds. When your function is given to you explicitly, ds is equal to the square root of the partial with respect to x quantity squared, the partial with respect to y quantity squared, plus a 1. And, and we take the square root of that, all of that, and it's multiplied by da. That's the formula for explicit formula ds, okay? Uh, the partial with respect to x is a 2. I mean, a negative 2, sorry. And the partial with respect to y is a negative 2. So you square those guys, you get 4. So you get the same value. This is not an accident. The, the magnitude of the um, normal vector and this, this first part of ds, they, they typically cancel. And so we're going to put these pieces of the puzzle together on the next slide. Um, one more piece we need to put everything together, we need the curl of the vector field. Uh, you find curl by um, taking the cross product between the operator vector del and your vector field. So what's in that second row there are just the operations of taking the x derivative and taking the y derivative of whatever you're gonna write next to it. And so we cross out i's column and row, we take the y partial of xy minus the z partial of y squared. And we end up with that vector there for the curl. It is that curl that we dot with our normal vector and we multiply by ds. So those threes cancel out, we dot, we get 2x, we get 4z minus 2y, and then we get a zero. This is just a double integral. Over what? Over the region that is the shadow region in the xy plane. Okay, let me give you a visual here. I did it on. Um, Geogebra. So I plotted our three points for our, for our um, sorry, I plotted our three points for our uh, plane. And to see the shadow region, we can rotate and then get the helicopter view. It's the triangle that goes from one on the X to one on the Y. That's the shadow region. Okay. All right, great. And so That's what R is. Now, if you see a Z floating around still at this point, it shouldn't be a Z. This is a dx dy or dy dx integral. Um, Z, we're, we're on the surface. Z, we know what Z is. Z is equal to 2 minus 2x minus 2y. We replace it. Replace the Zs if there are any Zs still floating around at this point. Now you have yourself a double integral. Um, I chose to do it dy dx. Nothing wrong with doing it dx dy. But um, in, in the y dx, we go from 0 up to the line. That's the line called y equals 1 minus x. The slope is negative 1, and it intersects the y-axis at 1. So that's y equals 1 minus x. And uh, multiply and simplify. Um, nice little double integral here. I'll let you grind out the results there. You can pause it, and I'll click through it here. Um, but it ends up simply as 4 thirds. Okay. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Um, this is the second video on Stokes Theorem. We'll have a couple more. Um, please like and subscribe, comment down below, reach out to me if you need any help. Take care.
See you in the next video.